You know, it's so easy when uh, you are praying and believing God and sometimes you get that little breakthrough, mm -hmm. but it's not the full breakthrough. Mm -hmm. It's not the miracle that you really believed for, but we so ha easily settle and we go, well, you know, that'll do. Mm -hmm. And we serve a God who's more than enough and yet settle for less than. And so I just, I, I be late, but began to believe my own journey uh, when I was told that I would never have children. Well, you know, God, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't happen. And I felt God say, you know, you, this is where you have to put into practice what you believe. Do you believe I'm a God that can turn around this situation? And uh, and I thought that God would answer my prayer and we would become pregnant within, you know, the next month because like all good women, I had a plan and God needed to fit with my plan. <laughs> but when he didn't, I just got frustrated and I actually got angry with God. I was like, you know, God, you need to come through for me now. I'm a good girl. Help me out. And, um, and I really began to realize that actually now was the journey of me actually putting into practice what I believed. Did I believe that actually God was going to come through? Or did I have a time frame that I was asking God he had to fit into? And I discovered that God does suddenlies and God does slowlies. And for me, I went on a five-year slowly journey. And uh, God took me on a process in that journey of getting the eyes off me and actually the eyes onto the other people I would pick up on the journey. And I was reminded of that story of Lazarus when Lazarus said to his friend Jesus, his family said, come, he's sick. And Jesus says, I'm coming. And then he waits and then he dies. <laughs> and you're like, that's not a very good friend. <laughs> <laughs> he was light, Jesus, uh -huh. you're light. But when you read that story, it's interesting what happens because Jesus then decides, okay, now we're gonna go to Lazarus. And he says to the disciples, and you're gonna get gr new grounds for believing. So straight away, someone else is gonna get a miracle on the way to Lazarus's miracle. And then he turns to Martha, who's been the control freak, that wouldn't be me, that's usually me, trying to tidy up for Jesus and do a good PR campaign. You know, Jesus didn't show up, but it's okay. And, and you know, and she, you know, she'd organized the, the whole, you know, funeral and everything. And then Jesus looks at Martha and says, Martha, do you actually believe who I am and what I can do? And now she's challenged with her beliefs. And then he gets to the basket case, the emotional basket case Mary, who's just weeping all the time. And he says to her, hey, it's time to start weeping. And then he gets to where the Lazarus is buried. And I love this part. And he says to the whole crowd that have gathered, the ones that are the naysayers, the ones who said, you know, where's your, you know, Jesus now. And he says, on account of this crowd that have gathered, Lazarus come forth. Mm. And all of a sudden there's a miracle for Lazarus, but there's a long way around that's happened to the miracle and the disciples, Martha, Mary, and the crowd all got a miracle too. Mm. <laughs> and I think that's what sometimes happens mm. with God. There's sometimes a suddenly and there's sometimes a slowly. For five years, I met people in waiting rooms I would have never met that were waiting to see a doctor like I was. I met people that couldn't conceive that I would have never met and had a new empathy for them. I threw baby shower parties for every pregnant woman in our church because God told me, sow the seed that you want to see in your own life. I prayed for people that I would never have prayed for. And five years later, we had our baby and we called her Hope because we never gave up, but she came the long way around. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that the end of the baby story? No, we had a second. <laughs> Noah Brave. Uh, we had a son uh, a few years later, and they're two amazing gifts from God, and they're two uh, signs of God being able to turn anything around. You know, there's a scripture that says, sing, O barren woman, which is a turnaround action. When you're barren, you don't want to sing. But it's like scripture's telling us, do the thing that will turn your circumstance around. You can cry or you can find a song in the midst of your barrenness. And I think in all of our journeys, every single one of us, we have things where we want to see God turn something around, whether it's something personal or something in our community. And I, I just wanted to compel people to say, you know, don't sit down in the disappointment. Don't stop at the grief. Don't camp out at the loss. Don't stop where you feel you were rejected understand that God, it's like turning a car. Sometimes it takes one turn, sometimes it takes five or six maneuvers to turn that vehicle around.